Hi, my name is International. Welcome back to another episode of the Dig Deep, the Mining Podcast. And today we have Steve Penny, who is a returning guest who appeared back in episode 124, which was in March earlier this year. Um, so you may want to go back and listen to that episode, um, obviously after listening to this. Um, Steve is a full-time uh, com- uh, commodity trader, um, or sorry, commodity investor. Uh, specialising predominantly in precious metals and uranium stocks, um, who I've personally been following since last year, um, and I'm a paid member of his newsletter, um, The Silver Chart List, where he shares useful tips on invested, where he shows the actual trades he's making in real time and updates his subscribers on current market trends across a handful of commodities. Um, he has a free and low-cost paid newsletter that is invaluable, um, which gives an insight to a basket of selected mining stocks where he provides commentary on what these stocks are doing. Um, so it's certainly worth looking into. Um, and Steve would t- obviously tell us more about that later in this episode. Um, Steve's going to come on the show three or four times a year just to give us an update on the market um, and more importantly, educate us on investing in mining stocks, um, should we wish. Um, personally, I started late last year and certainly understand a lot more about commodity investing. So I'm sure you're you'll do well um, as we enter a commodities bull market over the coming years. So enough for me, and that's welcome, Steve, to the podcast. How are you doing, Steve? Good, Rob. Thank you so much for inviting me back on. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. No, and I appreciate your time because I know how busy you are. So um, I wondered if you can give us a, a, just a quick overview of um, who you are, what you do. Um, obviously, if, if people are listening to this, can go back to episode 100, 124 and they'll be able to listen to a little bit more about your background, but I want to just give us a very quick overview of um, who Steve is. Sure, I'll keep it very brief. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a self-taught full-time investor and trader, uh, uh, and I'm laser focused on silver, uranium, and gold. And uh, I'm actually self-taught. Um, you know, a lot of people went to Wall Street and did all worked uh, with these big banks. Um, I never did that, and I think that's uh, been an, an advantage to me. Um, my professional background is uh, I was an Air Force pilot for about 18 years and, uh, and as well as an airline pilot. But uh, trading and investing is my full time job and silver chartist is my, um, you know, my passion. That's what I, I really am passionate about. And I think there's a really unique opportunity in the next, uh, let's call it two to five years in silver, uranium and gold and commodities in general. Yeah. And as you said, you, you, you've been self-taught. So really anyone that's listening to, to this podcast, obviously the, the majority of people involved uh, listen, uh, listen to this podcast are from the mining industry. So in their spare time, they can actually go away. And if they want to sort of invest in commodities, they can do it themselves. They don't need to, to get, um, obviously, a, a, a trader to do it for them. They can actually learn themselves like you have. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, I, you don't want to say anything's easy because it, anything worthwhile does require some work. But you know, I, I think it's part of um, the Wall Street scheme is to like make you think that you need them. And they use lingo and language that's, I feel like intentionally designed to, you know, make you feel like you can't do this on your own. And I, I think nothing is further from the truth. Yeah, certainly. Um, so I wonder if you can give us a, a, a quick update on the general commodity market over the last few months, obviously, since we last spoke. Um, I've noticed just a, a downtrend more recently at the time of this recording. So I just wondered, why is that? Yeah, so we've been in a sideways to down consolidation period for uh, just over a year now, going back to last August. So it's been painful for a long time, precious metals bulls. Um, however, we're, we're pulling back towards some key support levels and we're oversold. So for those who are new to the sector or have cash available, I view this pullback as welcome, a welcome opportunity. Uh, number one, because it shakes loose a lot of the loose hands, the momentum chasers, and it also gives newer entrants and new participants the opportunity to uh, begin accumulating positions at what I believe are very favorable long-term entry points. Now, could we go just a little bit lower here? Yeah, a- absolutely. But where we are right now, I feel like downside risk is minimal relative to the upside potential over the next two to five years. Okay. Um, I wonder if you can sort of provide us some commentary around what is happening in the market um, with the following, obviously looking at precious metals, gold, silver, um, also uranium and any other commodities that you're sort of looking at at the moment. Yeah, so from like a, a, mac, a, a wide macro perspective, the, the backdrop could not possibly be more bullish. I mean, silver and gold literally thrive in, in these kind of environments. 
where governments are over indebted, and it's mathematically impossible for them to make good on their debts and contingent liabilities. So they've got two choices, they can either default honestly, or uh, debase the currency. And history suggests that 100% of the time without fail, they're going to debase the currency over time. However, in the shorter term here, I think general market participants, the generalists, are looking at central banks beginning to potentially taper their asset pur purchases and perhaps even embark on uh, a rate hike schedule as early as next year. And the metals markets and commodity markets are very forward looking. So they may be anticipating that. And I don't, I don't believe that's going to happen. I don't think they're going to start to tighten mon monetary policy. However, if they do, I think they'll have to reverse course very quickly. And um, that will uh, stand to benefit the commodity sector and specifically silver and gold. Yeah. And um, what, what's about uranium? Because I know you follow uranium quite closely. So what's happening with uranium uh, over the last sort of month or two? Yeah, what, what I love about uranium is that it's really just a pure supply demand story where uh, silver and gold are more about, you know, um, what the monetary authorities are doing and their forward guidance and all this. So uranium is just pure supply demand. And that uranium price is going to have to rise to incentivize the new production to meet all of these reactors that are coming online around the world. And, you know, for the first time in, gosh, decades, both the left and right political persuasions are um, embracing nuclear as part of, you know, a green energy solution with zero carbon. Now, um, the, we're, we're seeing some weakness, just like we are in a lot of the commodities across the sector. And I think that presents opportunity. Just like I said, with silver, I think, uh, you know, there, there's potentially a little bit of downside risk here. But over the longer term, the upside potential is enormous relative to the downside risk over the short term. And um, w w one of the key things we have developing in the market right now is some of your listeners may be familiar with Sprott. They're one of the biggest um, you know, natural resource and commodity investors in the world. And they just be opened uh, this Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. They actually took over uh, an existing trust, but without getting too in the weeds, now they're going to be going out into the open market and buying physical uranium, taking uh, which is further going to exacerbate, exacerbate the already tight supply demand fundamentals. So the, the setup here over the next you know one to five years is extremely bullish for uranium. Yeah. And what, what will make the uranium price sort of slowly creep up? What are the factors? Is it more money pouring into the actual commodity? Yes. And we're seeing that in the price charts. So first of all, this sector is extremely small. There's only about 65 pure play uranium mining companies in the world. And each of those companies is very small market cap. So when big money tries to pile in or uh, institutional money, I mean, you can see really explosive moves. And we've seen some of those moves over the last year. So right now, we're kind of just digesting those recent gains. But as far as what can really drive this market, a fundamental catalyst that I'm watching for is the utilities. The utilities are going to need to start um, doing long-term contracting in the near term here. I, I would suspect that's, that's probably going to happen in the next month or two, or I shouldn't say month or two, in the coming months. Let's put it that way. So once those utilities start to contract for higher than uh, current spot prices, I think that's probably the next catalyst for the sector. Yeah. And is there any other commodities that you're sort of following at the moment outside of precious metals and uranium? Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I like to say we're laser focused on silver, uranium and gold, but I can't deny the current setup for what, what we call battery metals. And my two favorite battery metals are copper and nickel. And I think uh, those are facing a structural supply def deficit over the next five to 10 years as well, especially as the world goes more electric, you know, uh, previously like third party or um, third world countries get access to electricity. Now that's going to require a lot of copper and a lot of nickel. And that price is going to have to rise to incentivize that new production. So over the longer term, yeah, I'm very bullish on those two metals. Yeah. Um, obviously, with investing, what advice can you give someone that has never sort of invested in the commodity space before? Um, or even the stock market. Um, mm -hmm. And first of all, why should they invest in commodities, commodities? And where do you think they should start? So why should you invest in commodities? I'll start there. Yeah, uh, I, I believe right now, we live in an era where practically everything is in a bubble. Everything, real estate, stocks, bonds, except commodities. I, I call commodities kind of like the anti bubble. So the I call it asymmetry. You know, they, they present the most asymmetrical setup over the next handful of years here. And uh, commodities have never been so cheap relative to general equities, relative to real estate. They're just beaten to a pulp. And that doesn't mean they have to turn around right away. But if you've got a longer time horizon of a few years, 
I mean, commodities are the most undervalued sector out there right now. Um, and I'm sorry, I forgot the first part of your question. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's some, okay. some tips. That's right. Yeah, I mean, especially like obviously you, you mentioned about why you should invest in commodities. Um, mm -hmm. Where should someone start if they're if they're very new to either um, investing in the stock exchange or investing even in commodities? Where should they start? Obviously, ed education, I'd imagine. Yes. But where where should someone start? Absolutely. So f first of all, I would say a lot of people um, first learn about the the fundamental Mac, uh, bull thesis for uh, these sectors we're talking about, and they think they have to go all in. Uh, I, I would not recommend that because this is a volatile ride. And if you're all in, I mean, these sharp pullbacks can just be gut wrenching. So what, what, I, what I like to say is think of your whole financial plan as like a pie chart. And then you decide for yourself what makes sense for you, how much exposure do you want to these sectors? And then, you know, like our newsletter can help you with that specific part of your financial plan. But I wouldn't recommend going all in. Um, it's an individual decision, of course, with how, how much you want to allocate. And then the second piece of advice I would offer is when you get into individual stock selection, um, that's a very competitive skill set. You know, there's a lot of really experienced analysts trying to stock pick. So if, if you don't have that background, you know, there's nothing wrong with just buying an ETF. Like if you want exposure to junior silver miners, there's SILJ. Um, if you want exposure to the uranium miners, there's URNM. Now, I do think you can outperform those ETFs with a well-selected basket of mining stocks. But if you're new, I wouldn't go out and just try and pick mining stocks on your own if you don't have that kind of uh, background education. Yeah. And in terms of education, where did you start? Was there particular um, books that you looked at? Was there videos that you looked at? What sort of where did you start? And, and also, if someone was looking to invest in the industry, uh, any recommendations as to what they should read, watch, etc.? Sure. Uh, th there's a lot of good books out there, but to be honest, I, I, I was introduced to the sector by sub subscribing to some really good newsletters and um, <clears throat> the, the newsletter writers that I subscribe to have become my mentors. And um, I'm, I'm so grateful to have, I mean, I'm, I'm blown away that Jeff Clark is on our team. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Jeff, like for example, Jeff Clark is someone I began following uh, well over 10 years ago. And then, um, you know, he, he didn't know me, but now he's a contributor to our newsletter. So I would suggest finding a mentor, you know, someone whose uh, framework and worldview fits, fits your own and then learn from them. Um, th I think that's the best way. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's a lot of talk uh, in the mining industry about entering a bull market. Um, so why, why are they saying this? Why are they saying that the uh, mining stocks are in the bull market? Yeah, yeah. Why are we entering the bull market? Sure. And I, I would just define a bull market as um, an uptrend, a long-term uptrend, a series of higher highs and higher lows. And we, we've seen that in gold. I mean, we're pulling back um, in a lot of the commodities, but we're in an uptrend and we're in a bull market. I mean, there's really no denying it. Um, so, um, you know, I, I guess if you pulled back more than 20% from the recent high, you could make a case that um, you're in a short-term downtrend, but um, it, it's just what the charts are telling us. Yeah, I understand. Um, and what stocks are you actually focusing on at the at the moment, and why? And I suppose I suppose over the last week or what, last week or two. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I I like the royalty and streaming companies. Now they don't have as much upside potential as the pure play mining stocks, but I think from a risk reward perspective, the royalty companies it's it's hard to. Um, it's, it's hard to beat them on a risk adjusted basis. Yeah, they may not be 20 or 30 baggers, but at the same time, the downside risk is minimal relative to the individual mining stocks. So I really like the royalty and streaming companies. I think that's a good foundation for uh, most portfolios. Um, but that said, on this recent pullback, it's the more junior components of the sector that have pulled back the sharpest, um, the junior silver mining stocks to be specific. So I think if you've got a longer term time horizon and the risk tolerance, these things are very risky, but th those are preventing, presenting the most compelling value proposition right now, the junior yeah. silver miners. And can you just give us a, a just quick uh, exploration of what, um, sorry, explanation of what a royalty company is? Sure. Um, so let's say you're a mine, let's say you're a mining company. It, it's often difficult to get financing, especially on favorable terms. You know, traditional banks don't necessarily want to lend to some mining company because they don't understand the business. So what royalty and streaming companies do and say, come along and say, hey, well, I'll give you uh, funding. And in exchange, I, want, I have the right to purchase a certain percentage of the metal that you produce from that mine 
typically, uh, you know, different contracts are structured differently, but frequently they're like, you get 20% of the metal that's produced from the, that mine for a, and you can buy it at a price far below the market price. So a lot of these gold mining contracts are uh, structured where you can buy a, like 20% of the gold produced from the mine for the life of mine for like $400 an ounce. Well, gold is up near $1,800 an ounce. So that's a fantastic profit margin. Yeah. Um, and how do you see the sort of commodity markets playing out for the rest of this year? Um, I, I think we're very close to a bottom. I think we'll start to trend higher. But I think it's probably going to be early into 2022 is my best guess right now of when things really start to accelerate again. And, you know, that may sound kind of boring, but now's the time to accumulate, I believe. You know, you want to accumulate before the big pop, because when it goes, they go fast and it's hard to get on. If you don't have a seat at the table before they start to move, it can be hard to get on. Yeah. Um, and just want to conclude, I wonder if you can just obviously tell us about your free and um, paid newsletters. Um, obviously, I'm a, I'm a subscriber uh, to them. And yeah, just wonder if you can give our audience a, an overview of both the free and paid newsletters and what, what they should expect. Sure. You, you bet, Rob. I'll keep this very brief, but we, yeah. we provide a free newsletter. It goes out every Sunday afternoon. And the goal is to provide a ton of value for free. And, um, you know, we don't spam you or hit you with high pressure sales messages. It's just a nice outlet for us to communicate our thoughts. Uh, however, there is a, a premium version. It's very low ticket. We keep it affordable so we can serve as many people as possible. And that's where you get a fully transparent over the shoulder look at exactly what I'm doing. Every time I buy a long-term position or sell one, um, I let our members know with an explanation. There's also live monthly mastermind calls. There's, there's just a ton of value there for premium members. Yeah, certainly. And, that, and I can add vouch for that. Um, and literally the paid newsletter is literally a few cups of coffee obviously depending on what country you're in but it is a uh, it is a very low cost and you get so much benefit from it and like i said i've learned a lot from from reading your newsletters um and obviously i have invested in in various stocks that you've recommended um obviously done my due diligence but um certainly it is worth um even just just to uh, subscribe into the free newsletter because you actually will learn learn a lot and especially the guys that are listening to this um uh, podcast are in the mining industry so it's going to resonate with them uh, a lot of things that you're saying absolutely uh thank you rob so much for inviting me on yeah no worries um hope, hope you guys uh, i really appreciate your time steve again and hopefully we can speak later later this year or at the end of the year or even beginning of next year um, and for those that are listening to the podcast, um, we, we will enclose the um, um, links to um, Steve's newsletter um, in the show notes. So you can have a click on there, have a read through, subscribe to his free, free newsletter. It is free. Um, and obviously you can uh, start educating yourself. So hope you, um, hope you guys listen, uh, enjoy listening to this podcast. Appreciate if you can share amongst um, obviously people that you work with. Um, and also friends and family that may be investing in the stock market or maybe would, um, would be uh, welcome to obviously start in investing in the stock market, especially in the commodities market. And as like Steve said, we are entering a bull, bull market. So um, there's certainly a lot, of, uh, a lot of money that can be made um, during the next, obviously, two to five years. So um, appreciate everyone for listening. Until next time, happy mining.